What we have here is the very latest and quite different electric outboard from a company called Remigo. Now Remigo are Slovenian, uh, they've designed and built there and as you can see it's quite a different looking setup. So rather than having uh, a conventional style shaft as you would with a petrol motor with a removable battery on top, the whole battery is enclosed within this rudder shaped shaft. So the whole thing is completely sealed, it is waterproof, watertight, and you just lift the whole unit on and off the boat each time rather than just removing the battery. Now because you need to move the whole motor around, what they have done rather cleverly is integrate this tiller handle as part of a carrying apparatus. So it's perfectly balanced when it's set like that. It's relatively easy just to lift the whole thing and move it around. But then when you need to attach it to the boat, come over here and you can see that we've already got the bracket in place, which I've clipped onto the transom here. And that has a tube which this whole thing slots neatly over. So if I put this upright, I can swing the handle around. By pulling it down, that unlocks it enables me to swing it round into the upright position and then I can lift that on, slot it on to the tube and then there's a little safety pin that slides through into there and locks that onto place. So now we're ready to go and the other thing that you notice is that this whole rudder unit sits within a kind of clamp bracket. So rather than having different shaft lengths you just have the one unit which you can undo these bolts and then shift the whole thing up or down to make sure you've got the exact right shaft length for your particular boat. Okay, now we need to just get going, get it in the water, give it a try on the water. I've rigged up the Remigo to my little tender, which is a Lodestar 2.3 metre. It uh, takes sort of two or three people max, so relatively small for this size of motor. It could definitely power a bigger boat, but let's give it a go and see how it works. So first up, we can see a couple of things here. So here we've got the battery remaining, that's these lights here. And on this side, you have power. So if I flick it into forward, you can probably just see the propeller starting to turn and then you go up in notches. You can see it gets progressively quicker and the lights light up to show you that. And then when you want to go into neutral again, you just press them both and it stops and then into reverse with that one and same again. So you can see very neat controls, but that's how it works. That is the only form of control rather than a twist throttle. And that is because this isn't a throttle, it is the tiller and it is the carry handle. Now it has a kill cord, just like any other engine, but rather than clipping onto something, it is a magnetic kill cord. And when you pop that on, it clips into pace and you can see the lights going up and down and that's just making sure that it's talking to each other and tells you when it's ready to go. Now the price for this engine is £2,180. Uh, it comes with a two year warranty and the whole thing is sealed. So this is completely sealed. It's an aluminium casing and it's fully waterproof. So that even if you drop it in the water, so long as you've got a safety lanyard on it, you can pull it up again and it'll work no problem at all. That's the charging socket and that all lives safely under there. And again, that's all fully waterproofed. Now, this is the bracket, obviously that it slides up and down and that's what you use to adjust the shaft length. You can't really do that on the fly because you do need an Allen key to do that, but it is, does mean you can adjust it to suit the boat you're on. Now, in terms of how long the battery lasts, the manufacturers claim that that should last for 30 years, that battery. And even after 30 years of typical usage, it should still have 75% power remaining. Now, there's no way of me testing that now. <laughs> we, we can't do that, but we'll take their word for it for the moment. But realistically, if it does 10 years, then technology and everything else probably will have moved on and you might be wanting to buy a new outboard by that point anyway. But let's see how it works on board this little tender. Now, it's got a little latch down here for putting it up and down. I have noticed that's got rather sharp edges on it. It's not the most comfortable to use. So that little latch there just locks it into place and then drops down. And then the tiller, you lift that up, slot it into place and that locks in too. Okay, so let's knock it into forward. And we are underway, straight away. Now the nice thing about being rudder shaped is it means you've got 
really good steering on it. So as well as the vectoring the thrust of an outboard as you normally would, which obviously steers it, because the whole thing is actually the shape of a rudder, it turns really, really well. And in fact, even when you're in neutral, you still have some steering. If you've got any kind of way on the boat, it does mean you can steer it. So when you're coming alongside a craft, you can knock it back into neutral and just drift in while still steering. Now we've got a little bit of wind and a bit of tide against us, but we'll give it a go and see what performance we get. Now what I have noticed is because the boat is quite small, <laughs> I have to sit quite a long way forward to balance it. And it is a little bit of a stretch reaching across to hit these buttons. So in some ways that's not quite as convenient as a twist throttle, but it does mean you just lean across. Let's put it all the way up to full power. There we go. And it has got quite a lot of thrust. Now the thing about these electric motors is that they may not rev quite so quickly, but they do have very good thrust. And that's partly because of the torque and the motor and the bigger propeller. But let's have a look at my watch. I can see we're doing 4.1 knots in this direction. So really good thrust. I'm sure you could drive, well, I'm sure this engine could power a considerably bigger boat than this. So you can use it on a small sailing boat, for example, or a bigger tender, maybe a solid GRP tender. I think it would work just fine, but you can see it's pushing us along really very comfortably. So 4.2 knots, and that's into the wind. I'm not quite sure if there's much tide. I don't think there's a great deal of tide at the moment, but let's turn it around and try it in the other direction. Here we go. Now let's have a look in this direction. Yeah, we're doing 3.8, 3.9. So it's probably a little bit of tide against us in this direction. But I think what is particularly interesting is if you knock the speed down a bit, And there we are at 50% power. And at 50% power, we're still doing 3.3 knots. But the real beauty of these electric motors is they're just so quiet. And if I just stop blathering on for a minute or two, you can appreciate that. almost silent. And again, very easy just to knock that back into neutral. And of course, if this was a petrol motor, I'd now be pulling away <laughs> trying to start it again. But on this occasion, I just press the button and we're off again. So, what do I make of the Remigo? Well, first impressions, very positive. I think that rudder works really well in terms of steering. I think it's a, it's a bit of an ask to have to lift it off the boat every time you want to recharge it, but not that much of an ask because it's so well balanced with that handle that it's actually very easy to carry. And to be honest, most of the time, you are gonna be taking the whole motor off just for security reasons as much as anything else. You know, they're quite expensive bits of kit. You don't really want to leave it on your boat any longer than you have to. So, yeah, in some ways, the torpedoes and the e-propulsions with their removable batteries, perhaps a little bit easier, a little bit simpler if you just want to leave the rest of the engine or the rest of the motor on the boat and carry the battery. But actually, I don't think this is too much of a penalty. It's very easy to do. It's very easy to carry. It's not that heavy. It's very well balanced. And I think the benefit of having that steering is rather clever. You just have that, a bit more steerability. I think in terms of performance and range, there's very little in it, to be honest. So as much as anything, it's about what suits your style of boat. I think perhaps on a sailing boat or a bigger tender, this could be really good. Uh, maybe on a smaller inflatable like this, not so sure. I think there's, there's very little to choose between them, but I think the lesson that I have learned is that nowadays I would 100% choose an electric motor over a petrol one on a small tender like this. 
I think it's got plenty of range and I think the benefits in terms of silence, in terms of ease of use, in terms of not having to worry whether it's going to start, anybody can use it, you don't have to, there's no pulling away at the starter cord or any of that. So overall, very impressed, very tidy, very convenient and very quiet. Nice piece of kit. Thank you.